Welcome to vanofaction.com. It's a snowy morning here in the mountains. Good gosh. I'm walking over to the shop. I've got a little bit of work I want to do on the van today. And I'd like to share with you what we did to the front seat, passenger seat of our ProMaster van. I know that there will be some folks with Dodge ProMaster vans that have bench seats that are going to find this information in this video to be very useful. If that's you, even if it isn't you, give us a like. Give us a share, and by all means, give us a subscribe. Sub 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 give us a sub subscribe. If you're a person who's just planning their van now, let me give you a little bit of our backstory. It may help you find a little comfort that you're not the only person going through this. In the fall of 2020, we made a snap decision to move from Ontario, Canada to British Columbia, halfway across the country to be closer to our kids between phase one and phase two of COVID. I had two weeks to find a place to live and two weeks to find a van. And the reality of it was, even then, they were hard to find. They're even harder now. This van was coming off of a lease. I bought it sight unseen. I said, I'll just take it. It's a Dodge 3500 extended body, which is what we knew we wanted to have that way. But it came with a driver's seat and a bench passenger seat. At the time I thought, ha, it's no big deal, I'll just switch it out when I get out west. When we were designing the van, one of the sh very short list of must-haves was a driver's seat, a passenger seat, and room between so that we could access the front of the cab and the back of the van without having to get out a door and walk around. I and mean, you know, that just was one of those fundamental things we had to have. So when we closed our eyes, this is what we saw. Two beautiful captain seats reclining with arms. The kind of seat you could sit in all day long and drive down the highway and feel good about. And then when you got to wherever you were going, you could turn them around. They become part of the cabin. You could lounge in them, read a book, you know, maybe have a table in between. That's what we saw. But when we opened our eyes, this is what we saw. Might as well have a wall between the front of the van and the back of the van. I know this will work for some folks, but boy, oh boy, for our design, this doesn't work at all. That was just terrible. So I thought, well, that's not a big deal. I'll get on the phone. I called my local Dodge dealer and said I'd like to get a passenger seat for my van. And they asked for the VIN number, and he said to me, you can't have one. And I said, what are you talking about? I can't have one. And he said, well... Your van was designed and built with three seats in the front. That means there's, th there's three sets of seat belts, three sets of airbags, and the computer system is designed to read for three. You cannot reprogram the computer system. If you put in a single seat, one set of seat belts and one set of airbags will be missing. The computer will read a, a, a malfunction. The warning light will be on all the time. And these systems, if they don't work 100% they don't work at all. So none of the airbags will work. None of the seat belts will work. You won't be able to certify it. You won't be able to sell it. It'll always, it'll never be right. And I don't think the Dodge Corporation wanted to accept liability for that. So they wouldn't sell me one. So that plan one, out the window. Plan two is, well, I figured there's, and online, there's gotta be a way to, to fool the computer. That can't be that big a deal. There's gotta be a way to do that, but I still need the seat. So I was thinking maybe I could pick up a seat from a wrecker from a van that's already been in an accident. So I phoned all over British Columbia and all over Alberta. And I think all the wrecking yards are all connected by computer anyway. They all know what each other's have. I couldn't find a seat that hadn't had the airbag deployed. When they're in an accident, the airbag goes off. That's just the way they work. So I, could, I found a couple of seats, not many, but they all had the airbags deployed. That's going to be a problem. Then one uh, guy at a wrecking yard said, well, you know, maybe you can have a new airbag sewn in. Well, that's maybe possible. I've got an airbag in the seat I'm taking out. Maybe I can, maybe I can do that. So I started phoning around to upholstering shops, trying to find someone who would sew an airbag in. Now it turns out these airbags are sewn in with terrible thread, a certain kind of thread. And I found one upholsterer who would do it for me, but they wanted to sew it up and then send it out to be certified. I mean, rightly so. They didn't want the liability of it being wrong. I had to send out their finished product to a testing company and have it tested to be certified that it would actually function the way it was supposed to. That was supposed to cost a couple of thousand bucks. And that doesn't make any sense. I, was, I chased this around for months or I was, while I was working on other parts of the van, I was having this real, really turning into a real problem because we didn't want to have that bench seat there. And then one day I was on a video call with a good friend of mine, an old friend whose name is Peter Huffman. Pete, thinking of you. And he spent his whole life 
in, as a welder and a machinist in industry. He spent his whole life helping engineers solve problems that either they didn't understand or they didn't even know they had. Pete's one of the smartest guys I ever, I've ever met. And I was telling him this problem and I was showing him this video, in fact, and I was saying, look, Pete, this is where the pins line up and this is the part the cantilever's over and the cables come up out of the floor for the, for the seat belts and the airbags and it's all right here. And, it's got, and, he, and I was going well, on and on. And he looked at it and he said to me over the phone, he said, why don't you just cut off the parts you don't want? And I said, what? And he said, why don't you just cut off the parts you don't want? And I looked at it and I thought, you know what? That just might be a good solution. I went into my little town nearby of Enderby and found the only upholsterer in the area. And I told her what I was trying to do. And she said, sure. I said, do you think you can do that? She said, absolutely, no problem at all. Just bring in the seat and we'll take it apart. Bring it in on Saturday. Now taking the seat out of the van was actually, it took about two minutes. Two bolts at the front of the seat. It just lifts right out. You disconnect the, uh, the all the cables, but they just plug on and off. It's really simple. They just unplug, lift the seat out, put in the back of the car and take it into town. And that morning in about an hour, the two of us peeled off the, uh, the, the material from the seat. And now I would tell you, this is not something you want to try at home. If you're not an upholsterer, go to an upholsterer because these seats, they have the cloth goes on a certain way and there's little hooks and things that I would have cut off if I had not known any better. And she needs, or they need them to have that, uh, those hooks and those wires in the right place in order to put the material back on again. So don't do this at home. Make sure you go into an upholsterer and do it. About an hour and a half, two hours later, we had it all done. This is what it looked like. And with the, with the material off, you could look at the foam and you could start seeing some symmetry to what was going on here. You could say, well, I can see how this might work. If we take this part from here and put it onto there and take, take this part off of there, it just might all fit together. Because of the way the pins line up on the, on the framework lines up on the pins coming out of the floor of the van, I wasn't able to keep the symmetry of the back of the seat and the front of the seat the same width. It made more sense to me for the headrest to be able to have the back be the same width as the driver's seat, but the bench part of the seat was going to be wider to accommodate the extra width in the framework. That way you, didn't, you weren't banging your leg on the bottom of the frame. To me that made more sense. And in the final product, my wife prefers it to be a little bit wider because you can sit uh, cross-legged. There's enough seat there to, for it to be able to sit cross-legged. And this seat doesn't recline, so it, it, make, it has a little more comfort. After we had the material off and we looked at the foam and had a conversation about the best way to solve or to, to salvage the foam for reuse, we took the foam off and looked at the steel frame. And that's when things really started to open up for me. That's when you could really start to see how the thing went together again. And I had a conversation with the upholsterer about, about how what she might like to see it, uh, coming back to her in, in order to make it easy to put the material back on. And with that in mind, I was able to take the steel frame out of the upholsterer shop and take it to Bob, the welder, and start cutting it away to, to modify the metal part of the frame and turn this stinking double thing into a single seat. Here is the seat completely stripped down. Still has all the electronics on it that are that it came with. There's the airbag, which really surprised me at how small it was. I've got the seat belt tied up around the back here, but this this seat belt assembly, this part of the seat belt assembly probably won't be needed. Well, it won't be needed. I'm going to see if I can find some way to take this one and move it over to be the edge of the new seat. Should be quite an adventure. These things are remarkably simple and remarkably complicated all at the same time but I am really optimistic about the way this is gonna to come together. The one big hurdle right off the, the bat for us was recognizing that the frame of the passenger seat was wider than the frame of the driver's seat. And that's been a, that was, we weren't sure just how that was gonna work out, but once the cloth was all off, you could see how it actually makes a little bit of sense. And the bench part of the seat actually overhangs the frame a little bit. I'm assuming that's for safety reasons. But on the inside edge, we're not going to have that same overhang because we wanna maximize the space between the seats as much as possible. And it's already gonna be wider than a normal seat would be. That's fine. But when it's clear we have to treat the bench of the seat and the back of the seat individually. So looking at the back first, we thought that would be the best place to attack it. And the passenger seat has two headrests in it 
and the driver's seat has one. The headrests are all identical. So we thought if we could work around the one headrest on the passenger side and end up with a back that was symmetrical around it, it would be exactly the same as the driver's side. And that was the way we thought we would approach it. In doing this, we don't have to touch the airbag at all and the electronics for the seat belts and the airbags and the bench of the seat won't be touched at all either. It'll be perfect that way. Looking at the back of the seat, it's clear that the right hand rail and the left hand rail are mirror images of each other. And the headrests are mirror images from each side as well. So we thought, holy cow, if we could just cut out the middle part of all this structure and bring the outsides together, symmetrically around that headrest to maintain the centers it might just that just might work so the first thing we did though was those three cross rails on the back there will be needed but to put the material back together again so we very carefully ground those away from the center support seat belt support and then it was just a question of cutting everything out from the inside by by uh by and still maintaining the centers for the head rail that's what it looked like. And then to move the right hand rail over, we made a cut just above that junky chunk of steel near the near the bench. And that's what it looks ends up now. Now and to join these pieces together, they're just hollow steel tubes. So all you have to do is find another piece of steel to slide inside those tubes make sure it's all clean this is was taken before i had it all cleaned up but clean up all the joints slide both pieces over top of the 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 stint you have in the inside and weld all three together you're not but welding two pieces of pipe together you're, you're welding three pieces of steel together it makes for a really strong connection you can use it all over the whole renovation it's just perfect so now looking at the bench of the seat it was clear that we first established where we wanted the new edge to be and we thought it would be best if we could line it right over top of the frame. And then we took the line from the outside edge and measured in from the outside edge five inches and from the new finished edge five inches and made the cuts on those two points. So we were taking out the center part of that cut. And then we cut the back rail of the bench back where it's in a straight perpendicular cut just ahead of where it met the, the back of the seat. We ground off the springs very carefully because we knew we'd want to save those. And with that done, this is what it looked like. We could just move it over. And again, we used the little, we used our pipe stints to, uh, to, to make the connections again. And then it was a question of dealing with the seat belts. And that was really simple. Once we got that far along, there was just two pipes that had to be cut off and they just simply moved over again. It was just, it was uh, really easy to do. Once we, once we got it that far along, it was pretty clear what had to be done. And here we are with the pieces set back together, ready to be cleaned up. So now it's a question of taking and preparing all the places that are gonna be welded back together again to make sure they're nice and clean and ready to go back so there's no contamination. I didn't have to do this with Bob. At this point in time, we had about four hours invested in this alteration. Probably over two of those hours were spent just trying to figure out what we should do. Actually doing it didn't take that long, but we were afraid to make a cut and, and do it wrong because it was too hard to put back together again. So we had about four hours, one morning spent doing this. I put the, the, this chair back into the, my car and took it to my shop to clean up. If I was to do this again, we thought that, no, we thought that by rotating this, this support piece 90 degrees, we'd be able to save the bracket and have it run this way instead of that way. If I was to do it again, though, the way it's turned out, I would have left this assembly together. Would not, I would not have cut this piece off. Make a cut here. I chose five inches. It was, it's an arbitrary figure, but I make a cut here and here and make the break there and then take this whole corner and move it over so it lines up where it's supposed to be. I think that'd be, that would have been easier. And then this piece, I would just cut it off and, and, um, and then the piece that 
comes out of this one actually slides inside. It's really cool. Slides inside, so then just slide it inside, bring it up where you need it, butt weld it, and weld it down. I think it'd be as good as new or better. In my opinion, as a carpenter. Now I'm going to do these, spring, these springs. I'm going to rework the springs a little bit. The upholsterer needs this line of springs in order to, to wrap the, uh, the uh, fabric to, and I believe this one as well. So I end up, this one will be easy enough. I can bend it off and, and, uh, and bend it back. I should not have cut this one. I should have left it folded up so that I can rework it and bring it back in. I got carried away there. I'm going to have to figure out a way to do that. Right now, we're going to work on this one. See if I can bend it with a little bit of heat. I think that's going to be great. I think that's going to do it. I'll just take that off, it'll be fine. And here we are, all cleaned up, ready to, to go back to the welder. All the, all the joints have been ground clean. Every place that's going to be welded is spotless. It's nice and clean. I took the time to make some spacers for the headrest and for the, the back sides, just to make sure they were exactly the right distance apart. I thought it would be a, a safer thing to do so that when Bob was welding, it'd be easier for him. The seatbelt uh, assemblies right there, it'll get welded up and just nice and neat as well. And then we were back to the welding shop with Bob and he started just putting everything back together again. This part took less than an hour. It just, just it was all set to go. We just moved it from one spot to another and got it all cleaned up and it was just, it was great. I took the, the chair back to my shop, ground off all the little burrs that there were and got some black spray paint and here's the finished product. It looks great, I think. We reworked the springs. The electronics are still there exactly as they were supposed to have been. The airbag wasn't touched. The seat belt moved over. I'm quite happy with this. It looks pretty good. And you see how I reworked the springs? We just, uh, just tack welded the back in again. The upholsterer should be quite happy with this. When I took it back to the upholsterer though, because of her workflow, it wasn't easy to get a lot of photos as, as it was being put back together again. This is, I stopped in one day and got this one. I was just, I was surprised at how nice it was looking. And then here is the finished product. Everything works just fine. It looked, it turned out really, really well. Slipped right back into the van, gave us the space we wanted. It's not ideal. The seat does not recline and it does not swivel, but it's a whole lot better than it was when we got like the, having the wall and having the bench. What a beautiful day. My gosh. Once the seat was put back into the van, I reconnected all the electronics just the way they were before. The, the, the seat belt and the airbags for both the passenger seat and the middle seat as well. Uh, the middle seat ones, the cables, I just ran them underneath the passenger seat and just tucked them inside. As far as the computer's concerned, there's still three seats in the van. There's just no one sitting in the middle one. As soon as I turned the key on, everything worked well. No warning lights. The system is 100%. The one thing you have to do, though, that I forgot to mention, it's kind of important, too, is before you disconnect the airbags, you have to disconnect the battery from the van. There can be no current going through those connections when you break them. Otherwise, this, the airbags will deploy from what I've read. Otherwise, it was simple. It worked out really well. Hope you find this useful. Haven't seen anyone else do it just this way, and it really changed the whole dynamic of the van, and it created, it's not perfect, but it created a really nice environment for us to be able to get from the front to the back, and it's good. We're really pleased with it. It's the best we could do. Glad we did it. Hope you find it useful. If you did, give us a like, give us a share, and give us a subscribe. Said it right that time. All the best.